In this video, we're going to add touch controls using an on-screen or virtual gamepad in a Kaboom JS game. Welcome back to Arcade. I am Super Tommy, and we're going to start by getting some assets for our on-screen gamepad. We'll use Kenny's game icons that you can find at Kenny.nl. For this example, we're going to use the left, right, and A button. The game is going to be Kaboom's platformer example that you can find in the playground. The controls are made for a desktop computer using the keyboard. Left and right arrow keys move the bean character and then space is for jumping. We'll add mobile support by adding the on touch start, on touch move and on touch end function. But first we need to load the three buttons from Kenny's game icons assets and add them to the screen. Each button is made up of five components. The last two are the most interesting. Sprite and position components are for showing the button graphic and positioning it. Then opacity will be used to make the button transparent when it is not active or being pressed. Now fixed is used to keep the buttons in place as the camera moves around. It's useful for UI like these on-screen controls. Area is used to give us a collision box that we can use to check if a touch's position overlaps with the button. Next, let's add the touch logic. On touch start takes a function that will get called each time a new touch is registered, the touch's ID and starting position will be passed through. We're going to ignore the ID since we don't really need them. So the IDs are not useless, we're just not using them in this example. But we will talk about an unlikely bug related to this a little later in the video. Because the left and right buttons can be held down, we'll need to keep track of that in this key down object. We'll mark it as true when a touch overlaps the button and false when a touch is no longer overlapping that button. Here's what we do in OnTouch Start. We'll first check if this touch overlaps with the left button. If it does, then we'll mark it as true. If not, we move on to check the right button and do the same thing. If the right button is also not pressed, then we check the action button. For the action button, we'll immediately execute jump instead of storing whether it is pressed or not, since holding down action doesn't do anything extra. The jump logic is an on key press for the space button. It'll be the same for touch and the keyboard, so there's only one logical thing to do, share it. We'll take the jump logic and move it into a function called jump. Then we'll pass the jump function into on key press and call it from on touch start. Now let's take a look at on touch end. So there's a bug in Kaboom with on touch end that's been fixed on master, but not in the published version v2008. Now there's a very good chance that by the time you watch this video, v2010 will be out with this bug fix. If the bug hasn't been fixed yet, or you just wanna see how we can work around this problem, then keep watching and I'll spill my secrets. The problem is that the touch move event was being listened to for on touch end instead of touch end. So if you touched a button, didn't move, and then stopped touching, on touch end actions would never get called. One way to solve this problem is to make our own version of on touch end. If you have another idea, then let me know in the comments below, but here's how I did it. First, I create a specific canvas element in my index.html. Then I passed it to Kaboom in the initial setup. This way I could manually listen for the touch end event like Kaboom does. Then I have an array of touch end actions which will get called each time a touch stops. And for each stopped touch, I would call all the touch end actions and pass the ID and position. Lastly, I created an on touch end function that added the action to the touch end actions array and returned a cancel event function. The core logic here is either taken from or purposely mimics Kaboom JS so that the code works as a drop in replacement. Now you've learned the secret workaround, so let's get back to using on touch end. What we want to do in in on touch end is to set key down to false and set the opacity back to 0.5 if the touch position is no longer overlapping the button. So now we know when left or right is pressed, but the logic is in on key down. We'll want to share this between touch and keyboard controls, just like the jump logic. Let's break out the logic into their own functions. Then change the keyboard controls to also set left or right in the key down object like touch does. We'll use on key release to know when a key is no longer being pressed. Now let's bring it all together using an on update function. It simply calls move left if the left key or button is pressed or move right if the right key or button is pressed. What we have now is something that is basically working. This does look pretty good, but there is one big problem. If you press a button and then slide off, but don't take your finger off the screen, 
then it still thinks the button is pressed. The good news is that we can fix this problem using onTouchMove. The logic for onTouchMove is going to be very similar to onTouchEnd. So let's just share it. We can break out the onTouchEnd logic into a separate function. Passing onTouchChanged to onTouchMove and onTouchEnd will fix the sliding off bug, but if you slide back on, we want the button to register as pressed again. So we need to account for that in onTouchChanged by adding an else to each check that will set key down to true. Now we have controls that work as expected. All right, so there is one more bug, although we're not gonna fix it in this video because the odds of it being a problem are very low. You may not even notice it, but here's what it is. If two or more touches were overlapping a button and then one left, the logic right now would set the button as unpressed even though there is still one touch overlapping it. Share your solutions in the comments below. Would love to know what you guys come up with. And for more on making games on the web, check out this video over here.